Feral swine are not supposed to be here. They're abundant everywhere in the state of Georgia. They are very adaptable species. They, their survival ability is uncanny, and the reproductive rate is not matched by any mammal their size or bigger. So when you include all three of those items, they are the perfect, ultimate invasive species. We're in Newton, Newton, Georgia. They real hot right now. Oh, yeah, that's you fine. want one bag? Yeah, the peanuts are good for you. Yeah, yeah. If you don't boil them, you can bake them, fry them. There's a lot of ways to do them. I like to boil. You know, I like bake. I like them all. Georgia peanuts are worth hundreds of millions of dollars to the state's economy and and tens of thousands of jobs. When I was a kid growing up, seeing a wild wild hog was almost non-existent. You just never saw them, and now it's it's just so common. If a hog destroys an acre of peanuts then we've lost 5,000 pounds. Ergo, 5,000 jars of peanut butter aren't hitting the grocery store shelves. Yeah, you'll, you'll leave a peanut field uh, freshly planted at night and come back the next morning and it's just destroyed. Pigs cause a lot of damage to the producers, particularly during this time of year, during the planting season. They wreak havoc on these peanuts. Um, a lot of times these farmers, it's a, it's a song that gets played over and over on repeat throughout Georgia where farmers are having to replant um, because the pigs are coming out and following that planter. Uh, they got a better GPS than the tractor itself and pick up each individual little seed kernel. You're timing it to plant it at the right time and when those hogs come in and destroy that crop that you've planted, they're destroying the timing that uh, not only all the effort that you've put into getting that crop planted, but the timing and the moisture that you have in the soils to get the crop growing. Taper off at, with the damage, you know what I mean? So you can cross the rows as you need to. So when we're faced with a replant scenario from the, from the feral hog damage, it's, it's a timing issue, it's a huge labor and equipment issue, it's, it's land preparation issue, it's, it's thousands of dollars to replant a crop. To have a crop like that being destroyed by a, a non-native invasive species is frustrating. USDA Wildlife Services is trying to be very, very aggressive and proactive in providing these guys assistance through operational control. You know, uh, here in Georgia, pigs are showing up in areas where they've never historically been. Uh, that wasn't a natural range expansion or migration, if you will. That was 100% done for hunting opportunities. It's so important to incorporate other techniques such as large cross style trapping where you can target that entire family group. You can have multi-generational effects by removing 14, 15, 16, 20, 30 pigs at one time versus two or three. It's imperative if you're gonna be effective to control feral swine, you've got to incorporate an integrated approach. Recreational sport hunting will never control the problem we have in the state of Georgia. Cumberland Island National Seashore is the largest barrier island in, in the coast of Georgia. It's 36,000 acres of land when you count wetlands and uplands. It's, um, it became a national seashore in 1972. National Park Service owns and manages it. Typical morning, I'll be up before dawn. I try to leave the, the waterfront in St. Mary's right at dawn to get across about a 15 minute ride down the St. Mary's River over to the south end of the island. In the 1990s on Cumberland, there were high feral swine numbers. The loss of sea turtle nests in that decade was extremely high. 2000, it peaked at 67% of the nests were hit. And so that triggered the Park Service to do an interagency agreement with Wildlife Services at the time. This is where she crawled out of the water to go up to nest, and then the, the marks here is where she came back and went back to the ocean. Um, so we're just going to follow the crawl up and try to determine how she did when she laid the nest here. Sea turtles are an indicator of overall health of the ocean system. Huge effort, especially in the United States, and that's kind of taken over in other countries to protect, monitor, and protect their nesting. Females going to nest roughly six times in the summer. It'll be about two weeks between each nest. And so our early nest will have anywhere from 100 to maybe 140, 160. Usually her last nest might have as few as say, 40 or 60 eggs in it. 
During the nesting season, we need somebody on the beach every day from basically the 1st of May through the middle of October. So this nest will be marked. Um, it'll be screened for predator control or predator protection. Predators out here are typically um, feral hogs, raccoons, coyotes, um, typically diggers. And so that screen will stay on the nest. Incubation period on average is 55 to 60 days. So the screen will stay on this nest until it hatches. And knowing what was here in the 90s and when we first started in 2000, and then comparing that to now, the hog population is, is almost insignificant now. And so I'm really proud of the fact that this, this project has shown significant results as far as almost eliminating the, the level of hog predation on sea turtle nests. Well, the realistic goal is to suppress damage for agriculture producers and reduce the, those uh, uh, impacts to native species. So our hope, if we want the habitat to revert back to its native state, reduce the competition from, uh, from these exotic species to uh, native species, we hope to reduce those populations and, and re reduce that damage. We stop our efforts the hogs are going to come back and, 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 and continue. So it's a huge cooperative effort be, between landowners, between the, the USDA Wildlife Services guys. It, it just takes a big effort to combat what these hogs can do to you.